Hello, this is Barbara Dean Franklin, BD Frankly Speaking. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to the Law of Will Smith. So, Will, uh, can you tell me what motivates you? I'm, I'm motivated by fear. Fear of fear. I hate being scared to do something. It's very simple. This is what I believe, and I'm willing to die for it. Period. You can't be scared to die for the truth. The truth is the only thing that's ever going to be constant. And you can't fear what might happen to you if you were to tell the truth. Because what happens to you if you don't tell the truth is worse than telling the truth will ever be. Well, why do you think it's so difficult for some people to find and maintain love? A big part of the problem is that we misdefine love. The thing that we call love, the thing that we're searching for and we're trying to create that we call love is actually not love. J. Krishnamurti talked about the, the concept of the desire pleasure paradigm that we think about love in terms of desire and pleasure meaning that if you meet my needs then i love you if you don't then i don't so that love becomes transactional if you do what i want if you meet my desire and give me pleasure i love you if you don't meet my desire and you don't give me pleasure i don't love you I think that that in the insatiable nature of desire, trying to get somebody to fill our cup, I think that that leads to, to anger and it leads to uh, frustration and ultimately it makes us break apart from people. My daughter Willow really taught me a hard lesson. I think that the real paradigm for love is gardener flower. So the relationship that a gardener has with a flower is the, the gardener wants the flower to be what the flower is designed to be, not what the gardener wants the flower to be. You want the flower to bloom and to blossom and to become what it wants to be. You want it to become what God designed it to be. You're not demanding that it become what you need it to be for your ego, anything other than all of your gifts wide open, giving and nourishing this flower into their greatness is not love. Will, you have an interesting theory about fault versus responsibility. Can you explain it for me, please? I had a debate with a friend of mine and we got stuck on the difference between fault and responsibility. She kept talking about how something was somebody's fault, it's somebody's fault. And I was like, it really, it don't matter whose fault it is that something is broken if it's your responsibility to fix it. For example, is it's not somebody's fault if their father was an abusive alcoholic, but it's for damn sure their responsibility to figure out how they're going to deal with those traumas and try to make a life out of it. It's not your fault if your partner cheated and ruined your marriage, but it is for damn sure your responsibility to figure out how to take that pain and how to overcome that and build a happy life for yourself. Fault and responsibility do not go together. It sucks, but they don't. When something is somebody's fault, we want them to suffer. We want them punished. We want them to, to pay. And we want it to be their responsibility to fix it. But that's, that's not how it works, especially when it's your heart. Your heart your life, your happiness is your responsibility and your responsibility alone. As long as we're pointing the finger and, and, and stuck in whose fault 
something is we're jammed and trapped into victim mode. When you're in victim mode, you are stuck in suffering. The road to power is in taking responsibility. It's not like you're letting somebody who wronged you off the hook. Like taking responsibility is an act of emotional self-defense. Taking responsibility is taking your power back. Share with my channel one of your favorite quotes. Rumi quote that I love. Set your life on fire and seek those who fan your flames. The Philly translation of that is don't be hanging with no jank ass jokers that don't help you shine. The prerequisite for spending time with any person is that they nourish and inspire you. They feed your flame. Look at your last five text messages. Are those people feeding your flames or dousing your fire? Put your phone down for just a second and look around. Look to the people around you. Are those people throwing logs on your fire or are they pissing on it? The people that you spend time with are gonna make or break your dreams. Everybody don't deserve to be around you. You gotta defend your light with your life. So who are the people in your life that are fanning your flames? So well, can you share with me your thoughts about happiness? You cannot make a person happy. You can make a person smile. You can make a person feel good. You can make a person laugh. <laughs> but whether or not a person is happy is deeply and totally and utterly out of your control. What is one misconception you can think of that we have that follows us from childhood to adulthood? Uh, self-esteem. We tend to base our self-esteem on what other people think. And that's not really self-esteem. Self-esteem is supposed to be how we feel about ourselves. And I was just saying how dangerous it is to allow other people to determine how you're going to feel about you. And it's kind of like looking into a broken mirror. You're going to look in a broken mirror and then change your face to try to look good in this defiled, busted, broken mirror. And it's it just other people's opinions is a really shitty way to determine how we feel about ourselves. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Thank you.